Welcome to Colony TV, the governmental educational channel for the town of Colony. Well, welcome to Meet the Author. My name is Joe Nash. Today we're going to be talking to Norrin DeLapp, a colony um, resident, well, not a colony resident. He was born in Colony. Now he lives over in Worcester after retiring from the state. He's written his memoir here. It's mainly about his serving in Vietnam, but it's also about growing up in Colony in the 40s and 50s. The book is called, But I Can't Shoot Straight, Really. A, a historical memoir of my time in the U.S. military in Vietnam. It looks, it's a very, very serious book, even though the title, you may, it looks like a, you're trying to be a little humorous, but welcome, Norm. Glad to be here. Appreciate Thanks for the coming. Opportunity. Now, we're filming this on September 20th. You're in town here for your 50th high school reunion. I see you have your, yeah, your letter sweater on, sweater on. <laughs> 50 years ago. Before we talk about the main part of your book about being in Vietnam, I just thought, um, we could talk a little bit about, in the, in the very beginning of your book, um, it, it's sort of jarring to read. When I grew up in Colony, it was all farms. So why don't you talk a little bit about, because the first couple of chapters, very interesting. What was Colony like in the late 40s and up into the end of the 50s? In the late 40s and in the early part of the 50s, it was strolly, totally farms. The, 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 the top part of Colony now, uh, Wolf Road, was nothing but <laughs> was sandy farms and pig farms yeah. and of course where Colony Center was that was a golf course that uh -huh. was a golf course and um, uh, I lived on Shaker Road uh, the lower part of it I, my, our, my grandfather's farm I, I grew up on a farm it was started at the corner of Shaker and Everett mm -hmm. and the farm ran all the way down almost to the old Pack and Company building okay. and uh, at that in that time uh, it was either produce farms, truck farms, which was what mm -hmm. was on Wolf Road quite a bit, uh, they, uh, and uh, and dairy farms, where the the crossings is here, the yeah. Constantine Farm. Yeah. They did, you know, uh, they had you know, a big. Uh, Right. Dairy it's, hard, it's hard to it's hard to imagine. It was like, that was, <laughs> everything between Albany and Schenectady just all farms and stuff. Correct, and it wasn't you know, that long ago. And our farm is, uh, was about eighty-eight acres and uh, belonged to my my grandfather, uh, John Krug, um, and uh, yeah, my maternal uh, great grandmother, uh, great grandfather, a great a uh, couple great uncles, and uh, it was. Okay. Uh, a farm that we did every, at that time in the 40s. It was everything. It was both produce and dairy farm. Okay, wow. And you, you give a good sense of what that's in the beginning of the book here. Uh, yeah, and uh, one of the things. Uh, now I grew up with my cousins there, but uh, the uh, another thing about what my, I used to go with my my cousin uh, uh, to take milk, and it used to go. The Platts at that time it wasn't. I don't. Know, it's still a retail store. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that, it used to be there. I think. Yeah, it not. used to. Uh, it used <laughs> to be strictly a uh, uh, place for farm for dairy farmers to bring their milk, okay. and they used to bring big yeah, yeah, iron yeah. things in, and uh, uh, that used to be a lot of fun for me. Uh, but then in 1950, my cousins, who did the and great uncle who did the dairy farm part, they moved up. Uh, uh, outside of Crescent and took all the cows okay. with him. Okay. And I have that in my book that kind of broke my heart. I, I, th I, I cite John Steinbeck in there that after they, after, you know, I used to have dreams about the cows being, you know, coming back down. And then, I don't know if you've ever read, I'm sure you're oh, like yeah, the grapes yeah. of grapes sure. of wrath. Yeah. In that he says uh, there is a warmth in life in a barn. Mm -hmm. uh, and I put in there going down and wandering around the empty cow barn, that warmth was yeah. gone. Well, there is one part in your book, in your, one of your, I guess, low points when you were in Vietnam, you, you write sort of poignantly about um, the memory of the farm. You just wanted to get back and see the cows, and that was right. kind of... Yeah, like <laughs> I, uh, this is, uh, uh, I have in there that, uh, uh, again, Vietnam at that time was new, and I, I was a pole bearer 
for, for some of the initial people that got, were, were killed in uh, February of 1965. And I was a pole bearer, a pole bearer at uh, two, two different ceremonies. And I, uh, after that, I get back and I just did not think that I, you know, uh, was going to. And the, get these out. were among the um, some of the first. These casualties. were one of the first big casualties yeah. at that time in '64. But then we, one night, we, we, when I was out in the boondocks, I thought we were going to get attacked, and uh, that was my thoughts. I said, "Gee, I I just want to get back somehow or another to to see the cows." I know. Well, that's and I I have in the, in the book <laughs> I, that when I came back from Vietnam, yes. that was the first. There thing. was a scene that when you came back, the first, first when you got back, you went up to your uncle's, uncle's farm, farm yeah. so and, was a, and, and hung out with the cows. Yeah. Well, so Mike, I guess why don't we start there? Um, you served in Vietnam in 1965. How come um, was this was this brewing for 40 years? How, why did you wait 40 years to write about your experience? <laughs> uh, it started out uh, because I I decided to. Try and write uh, something to the late newscaster to Paul Harvey. Uh, I thought he actually got me off KP duty while okay. I was waiting that to story go to Vietnam, book, yes. <laughs> and that's what provoked provoked the, okay. the actual book. So in the in the book, there's a little there's just a little story and a little letter about writing to Paul Harvey, and that that made you that uh, spontaneous. Okay. My daughter, really, uh, my daughter is the whole blame for the whole okay. thing. Right? <laughs> well, the one thing in the in the beginning here that's very very interesting, I found from reading. I've read, I haven't read a ton of Vietnam books, but there's a, basically a whole library's full. Um, you you wrote in the beginning here. The um, you wanted to write about the v, you say you you say the Vietnam I had known, the Vietnam worth protecting. That's not a, sort of a common thing in some of the Vietnam memoirs. What, what did you? What's, what does that mean, actually? Well, uh, my, I was not a, a combat. I was con, I was a communication mm -hmm. specialist, and uh, when I went to Vietnam, uh, initially they didn't have a job for me, so I was at the, the huge Tonsinu Air Base outside of Saigon, and I became a gate guard, and my got my job was to. Uh, look at the, the, the workers' packages coming in and out, and uh, I became, you know, talked to the people and uh, actually became much, you know, they, be, they became individuals to me. Yes. Uh, and uh, uh, so my idea that, you know, I, I uh, of that these were not people, that, they just were not, you know, the slang word for Orientals at that time was gooks. And again, they were ne you know, never gooks to me. They were yes. they were individual peoples. There was one uh, we we used to have people you know help out do our laundry and make our beds and stuff. It was good. It was good duty at that mm -hmm. time. And I became very friendly with one family, uh, which you had, do write about in the book, which I yeah. wrote about in the book. And I learned that you know these were people. They you know they they really again I put it. They just wanted to. Exist, you know. Yes. They didn't really ask him. Well, give us the definition of communism. Give us the definition of uh, uh, of uh, democracy. You know, they couldn't do that. Yeah. You know, but uh, to me, uh, uh, that's the big thing. I did is that I I viewed. Uh, you know, I uh, I guess I was against communism. You know, we were taught communism. You know, in the fifties. Uh, but well, I think you give a good sense in the book of yourself and the people in Vietnam being caught up in these forces and concepts bigger than themselves bigger or whatever themselves, you want to say, yeah. or that you were just trying to live your life too. And I was <laughs> just trying to live mine too. And it's so, tough, yeah. I mean, these things overtake, um, some th overtake, overtake us sometimes, I think. Um, the, uh, one thing in the book, you, when you were first in, and I, I should say one of the reasons maybe you, you wrote about Vietnam worth protecting. You were, you were there in 1965. Yeah, actually, this was before yeah. all the main. Right. It was only, I think, you said 20,000. 20,000 total. And all there, wasn't, there wasn't, um, like we used to watch when I was a kid on the news, there wasn't a hundred and something deaths per week, American. It was only um, 1965. Mine was, was about, the biggest. Yeah, I think it was the first one was about 20, and that was a big deal at the time. Yeah, at the time. Did you think, um, when you left at the end of 1965, if you rem if remember, 
What was your sense when you left? Did you think it was going to grow into this thing that would be 58,000 deaths and last until 1974? Did you think it would be, did you, do you remember what you may have thought then? Or? At that time. This is the end of 19, you left in December of 1965. I left in December of 65. Okay. And what, what, what did you think was going to? I thought that things were going to get worse. Yeah, because again, I, Again, I, I say you, you just sense it would last that long and have such a horrific cost with 58,000 lives dead? I did from the standpoint that and I was at that time, I was strictly a high school graduate, mm -hmm. and, and I did not think that sending a whole bunch of American troops in underground would work because of the type of mm -hmm. because of the type of uh, warfare that the communist North Vietnamese conducted. Mm -hmm. So I I guess even at that time I thought by sending in you know hundreds of thousands of American troops was a mistake. Yeah. Okay. Well, and you also say um, in in your book here, it's just going back to 1965. By the time I would return from Vietnam. Hardly anything would be the same. Even though it was still early in the war, how had America changed in, uh, in this is sort of the mid-60s? This is when a lot of things were going on. What, what did you do when you came back in 1965? What were some of the biggest changes? Well, the big, biggest change was, was my own personal life. I had, you know, uh, my, gr my, my, my grandfather had died. My father had, my father had had a heart attack and stopped working. Um, the uh, the farm the farm was because my grandfather passed away and uh, I think the farms were probably the farm was going yeah, yeah. you know was the, the the remainder of the farm was you know had to be broken up and, and sold and the attitude toward people serving in the military had changed I you know I, I cited in there uh, about when I returned. Uh, after st spending a night at the San Francisco Air International Airport, you know, a, a stewardess said, broke down the seat and said, you know, lay down and go to sleep until we get to Newark. And I said, that, I didn't know at the time, but that was going to be the very last time until I mentioned in the book about people in the movie theater saying, doing something positive toward the fact that I had been in Vietnam since uh, up until then. You know, so if you from, served in Vietnam was a dirty word. I know when the when the stewardess said to you, um, "Welcome back" or something, you said that was the last time anyone acted positively toward you till 2002. That's that's a, true. That's a long, I, and I actually did have stuff happen that was detrimental, you know, to me. I, you know, I had it when I was going to college. I had a, I, I, I lost some, uh, some teaching jobs when I was got out of college to be a teacher. And un unbeknownst to me, you know, there's somebody was was an anti-war activist, and I had to put down, you know, a little when I started to be yeah. a student teacher of this person, you had to put down your background. And I started, you know, I put in these app and started to get, you know, got these positive responses, and then, and then I went to the and I got these something was wrong, and I contacted one of the other uh, teachers that I had done practice teaching, so, so she. Uh, ordered my transcript and he said you, you, you're never going to get a job unless you unless you somehow get some different different recommendations on this stuff I don't know what I at that time oh, it was okay. against the law for her to, yeah. to tell me what happened what she put in there okay but there was something in there negative because and, you served in Vietnam yeah and then I have and when I worked for the state I was mentioning you know something we were they were just kind of casual conversation we're talking about in the office and I met you know they were talking about somebody else that seemed like a, a wacko you know in Vietnam I said oh no I, you know that was my situation I thought you know people were you know that, you know I it was more normal and the secretary said oh I didn't know you were a baby killer oh and so you know that well, perception you really well, the, you didn't put those two stories in, in your book. I <laughs> didn't throw that in. <laughs> I didn't throw that in. I mean, I, about the teaching job. About the teaching job, no. I, I tried to make it so that, even though it's my memoir, what I've been told from other people is 
uh, they made the connection of what was going on in their lives at that time. So I didn't try to make it too personal. Yeah. So that you know, there were people, you know, like uh, uh, one of the people that's at the at, going to be at the reunion. Now he's a farmer, and he said, "Well, the big thing I liked about your book was the stuff about what was going on in yeah. farms at that time." Yeah. You know, so uh, yeah, there were other things, negative things that uh, did occur when I, you know, again when I came back. Uh, from Vietnam, I, because I, I bought a car that was below the book price. State of New York sends sends me a thing saying, you know, we got to see this record, you know, because the car was worth more money and you paid, it was worth you nineteen hundred dollars. Well, you give when you it is interesting. You have a couple stories about when you're coming back. How here you are served in a war and everything, and people were very rigid in following all these rules about stuff, and you're like, what is, you know? <laughs> Yeah, it was... Uh, uh, Even the Army, though, you had to, in stay, the Army, you had to, you had to army, stay one extra day because of some mix-up. Yeah, yeah, I had to stay in the Army one extra day, which is significant in the book because I, I kind of put it, have it in there that if I didn't spend that extra day in the Army, I wouldn't have met my wife. That's right. That's, <laughs> well, that, it's <laughs> very ironic. <laughs> <laughs> well, you write... Um, you were there in 1965, and the, the war wasn't really, um, had, what's, I don't know what the word is, escalated. Or whatever. We were not combi combatant troops at that time. No, but when I arrived in no Vietnam, one was designated we were, we, as, oh, we were okay. all considered military okay. advisors. You, 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 you use this term in here several times, I was in an almost battle. Was it? The what were some of these situations uh, that, you know? Well, the, the, the almost battles uh, were... Uh, when the first almost battle was when I, I was in, I used to have a bicycle that I used to paddle around into Saigon because Saigon was mm -hmm. close by, and uh, one day I, I spent it, I was in Vietnam, I was in Saigon, I came back, riding my bicycle, and here comes this, uh, prop plane, diving over the road, and it had, it had, you could see it had bombs on it and rockets. And I said, what's going? On? I just get to the gate, and the MP says. Harry, back to your unit. It looks like there's going to there's going to there's there's insurgents approaching. And I, we got in. I, they said, "Yep, grab your rifle." And went to the went to the fence, and we had to stay stay there waiting waiting to see if we were going to get attacked. And nothing happened. That was my first almost bot okay. battle. And then when I was uh, uh, in out in the Boondocks, which place was Fuloy, This was a this was a military. This was a um, um, I just lost my train. It was, you know, um, what did I put? Anyway, it was part. It was part. It was part. It was you know, the advi It was a military advisor towards that was to the okay. Vietnamese. And one night we we uh, uh, the worst word came down that we were going to get attacked, and we fell out into the trenches. And I was, you know, I, I was I was. Uh, Attached it, we had to wait and see if we were if we were going to get attacked that night. And it got dark, and uh, uh, they finally we were waiting, and they finally had helicopters come in and drop the basketball flares to look yeah. around. And uh, uh, we waited there until about you know one o'clock in the morning. Nothing happened again. Yeah, my almost. my almost battle. Yes, but it, it's interesting though. You do write there was a couple instances. There's one when you were um, on a helicopter being shot at. Oh, yeah. And then there's one where you were um, getting ready for a possible attack, but, and you write very, you know, you say it was kind of exciting and it was an adrenaline rush, even it though was. it's possibly you're going to lose your really life. What, yeah, it really was. What is that like? I, I, <laughs> it's, it's hard to describe, but yeah, I was, I used to run track cross country, and uh, if you've ever been in sports, you do get mm -hmm. Pumped up, yeah, and, yeah. To, you know, to, and that's part of the human body. You get yeah. adrenaline to, to going back to the to, to the early army day, animal days, to where you get that was the purpose. But uh, yeah, when when the, uh, the, the the helicopter thing was just fantastic because uh, even though you're getting shot at, it was even getting shot at, no, well, let's, let's because <laughs> I was just a passenger, you know, and all yeah. of a sudden it dives down like a like a hawk, and it was skimming around. Off, off the off the river, you know, about this high, yeah, yeah. and it's going like this. And I said, what, what, what's going on? Oh, if we go straight in, we get shot yeah. at. Uh, oh, okay, we could drive up, and and sure enough, there was we yeah. the, the, the helicopter actually got shot at. And uh, even though it was a part of, I could have got sh shot down and got mm -hmm. back down. I said, gee, it was really exciting. I know, oh, and uh, you know, and and 
and the same thing with the night we thought we were going to get attacked. I mean, once we were out there, I said, man, man I'll call you. I hope they attack. Yeah, I want to I I yeah. <laughs> see what we can do. But again, once it got dark, I said, wait a minute. I, I know. know it's, it's it's, there's a lot of incongruities. I, uh, <laughs> and, um, well, one thing, going back to what you were saying before about you thought the war would not end up as well, you know, you thought it was going to not be good. Is, you write um, near the end of your, your tour there, you were all um, volunteers. Um, I, I, and I, you said you, you describe what it was like when you, you started getting draftees were coming over. And you even say at one point, you know, they were young and angry. And you even say some of them, some of these draftees, not all of them, but some of them were almost harder to relate to than the Vietnamese, like the family that worked for you and, and, and these other people that you knew. But was that, what was the difference between the draftees then and, of course, the volunteers? Well, you know, we weren't all volunteer. We didn't all volunteer to go to Vietnam. Well, that, I understand that. But, but I mean, we you, did volunteer you, to go into the, into yes. the Army. And uh, the, the draftees, didn't, you, you say they didn't really want to be there. They didn't want. They didn't not want just, to be. They didn't, just in the Vietnam, they didn't even want to be in the army, yeah, right? Okay. Much less in Vietnam. And uh, again, and, and the turbulence that was going on in the United States at that time. At that time, the biggest racial riot at that time occurred in Watts in Los yeah. Angeles, and there were and there were minorities coming who really, you know, there was racial tension. When I was there. Well, you know, it was only about 25 of us at this at military advisor's dance, and we had, you know, uh, we were a homogeneous racial group. Mm -hmm. But uh, the group, the ones that were coming over, uh, again, they, you know, they, their attitude was, hey, you know, it, why should I be out here, you know, f trying to get, maybe getting killed for something that, for, and I don't even have a good life at home. Yeah. And I think that was quite a bit of an attitude and 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 they and know also there were started to be some protests just starting I think in this country I, you know I didn't the well, fact I, that the fact that I you know I was in Vietnam we didn't always you, you it was censored you know it's you, yeah. you know you didn't get all the, the news but uh, uh, I I think that had something to do with it as far as uh, uh, they they did they just didn't want to be in the army period yeah okay you know, you write, um, you write near the very end of your book that, going back to what you were saying when you worked for the state there, you say that the overwhelming majority of men who served in Vietnam did not end up homeless or drug addicts or, you know, the, the way they're sort of portrayed. What, why do you think that persists as the, the, I don't know what the word is, the crazy Vietnam veteran? What, that stereotype, you were saying the overwhelming majority were obviously, why do you think I, that persists? Even to today. Even to today. I mean, I can't, I can't document that as statistic of yes. the fact. But uh, people, I think it's because again, after Vietnam became such a, a flashpoint, uh, I mean, it was that uh, you know. There was so much misinformation put out that you know the Amer you know Americans were out there killing babies, yeah. and and it just was never again. It did it occur? Did, did the My Lai massacre occur? Yes, it did, but uh, it it was never. It was just an isolated incident. Most of you know I I, I you know, most of the people who served in Vietnam, you know, uh, did not. Commit yeah. atrocities, well, no, and I, I think I, I think again, I think the quote mainstream media uh, just uh, misconstru misconstrued what was going on in, in, in the war, and and the, and the and the the drug addicts, the the, the, the uh, homeless, I, I you know over, t I think I think I, I think I have in there about two million people served in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just. At least the people that I have come yeah. into contact with, that was just never the case. So you know, we, you know, we just whether we went back to work or we went to college, uh, I think we tried to, you know. Uh, say, well, okay, the, the war has been over now for forty something years. 
Do you think, um, what is your sense of, do you think the, the, the wounds of the Vietnam War will ever heal or in our country? Or do you think there's still some, there's, is there still some open wounds? Oh, I think there's still some, I, yeah. I, think, I think it changed a little bit after the first Gulf War, you know, okay, because up then. at that point, uh, even though I might, uh, 25th reunion. Nothing, I, nothing was ever mentioned who was in the, in the military, and I'm going to ask that tonight. But that, up until really then, uh, if you were a Vietnam veteran, up until 1991, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you it was a dirty word. I mean, I, I mentioned this is in this is in the 19 uh, late 1980s, and this this secretary. You know, when I mentioned I had... You know, had oh, that, that incident you mentioned earlier, that was the 1980s? This was around 19... I would say 1987. And when she said the baby? Yeah, she was discussing some other yeah. person who had been in Vietnam, and, it's, and he was considered a you know, real wacko about all the strange yeah. things he did over there. I said, oh, no, come on. I, that, that, yeah. that, that, that didn't... I mean, I served there, and, you know, most of the people there that were just normal individuals, and, and that was her quote. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you were a baby killer. Okay. Now, have you, have, you, have you read a lot of the Vietnam uh, War books or memoirs? Or? I, I mean, there's, 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 yeah, tons, I of, there's tons of I, them. Yeah, I haven't read, uh, I've read a couple, you know. Okay. And again, they deal, most of the ones that I dealt with were, were ones about really combat okay. things, you know. Uh, and uh, again, my, it, it, the stuff that occurred in these later years may have occurred. You know, I, can't, I can only speak from what I was there. I, was, I went there in December of 1964 mm -hmm. and came back December of 65. Okay. And again, one, by the time I was leaving, you know, the uh, things, the Americans started to, you know, to be combat troops. So, uh, yeah. Well, what, one of the most moving parts of the book is you were driving on the New York State Thruway and you heard the news in uh, April of 1975 Correct. that Saigon had fallen and you had actually had to pull over. What, what was, can you talk a little bit about that or? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was, you know, I, I was on the New York State Thruway and uh, uh, I was coming home, home from Rochester and I was living in Schenectady at the time uh, and the news came over and uh, again, I hadn't paid really much attention to Vietnam, you know, over the years. And, you know, but uh, when that ha occur uh, the news came on, it just struck me that, you know, uh, this was all, you know, you know, it was all kind of a waste. And, and I just struck me, I could remember this family, you know, the mother and father and their teenage daughter uh, and, and uh, uh, that, they were going to be, you know, if they weren't killed outright, then they were going to have a tough time yeah. of it. And uh, uh, I just, again, I was not totally gun, a gung-ho, you know, um, you know uh, hawk on Vietnam, but I knew that all these people in South Vietnam, their lives would never be the same. Yeah. Um, now, one did you ever find out, because I read the book, your friend John, did you ever find out what? We what tried. Happened? Oh, okay. <laughs> actually, my daughter actually you know, we, uh, uh, sent something out. To, was it, you looked up John, uh, John Arbery, and she was, sent something out. You, and you never, you never could find it. Oh, okay. no, you know. And I guess my last question here about your book, about your Vietnam experiences, have you been to the Washington Vietnam Memorial? I what have. That like? My daughter did. Uh, we, which is one of these pins on okay. right? I mean, she, I, Did you? I, not but I've to gone go? to the. I've gone to the. I've gone to the one that moves around. The traveling. Yeah, I've, se I've seen it. Oh, okay. Didn't see anybody that I knew. You know. Oh, okay. But my daughter has been has been there. And it was very, very moving. But uh, I, when I, went, I went to the. I, I, you know, I've seen the moving one, which I. One of the things I've seen was in the newspaper, which I think is kind of uh, uh, watering down the. Vietnam Wars, and now they're going to have anybody who has died for whatever reason is going to be listed on the wall. If you mean, died, yeah, died died, if you were in the service? If you were in the service and, during and, 1964 to yeah. I'm, now I'm not sure 
if it's just being in the service, because that was the, that was another thing that was watered down, because instead of being a, a Vietnam veteran, they say, well, you're a Vietnam era veteran, veteran. And then you know, it's different. You went, but they are going to. I'm not. Don't quote me on it, but I don't know if it's going to be whether you served in Vietnam or you were a Vietnam, or a Vietnam era. era. But anyway, if, let's say you you you, you you know you you have prostate if you you die of prostate cancer. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, you're, you're going to be listed on the wall as being okay, I haven't, have something to do with Vietnam, and I think that kind of waters down, right. you know, the, the prospect of it. Well, I, um, we we spent most of the book, we spent most of our time talking about your Vietnam days, but I just tell people watching, a, a lot of the beginning of the book is about what Colony was like in the '40s and '50s. So, and this is we have the book in the library. What? If people want to get their own copy, how can they do it? Is it Infinity Publishing? It's yeah, it's uh, Infinity 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 Publishing. It's out of uh, uh, Pennsylvania. It's in Pennsylvania, okay. So and, uh, Infinity, Infinity, Infinity 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 Publishing. Infinity and you, Publishing. Buy it online, okay. It's right online. Uh, uh, the book is available on Amazon.com. Well, on Amazon too. Okay, that's even better. Well, it must be that's probably easier to people can find Amazon probably. And, Easier uh, than Infinity Publishing. And uh, I did have a. I, my daughter actually made up a poster because oh, okay. most of my books, it, it's actually uh, better to you know you have to buy them on your own. But yeah. in, it, the odd part of it is if you if in, if Amazon sells them. Even for thirteen ninety five, which is what the book was listed at, yeah. got ninety two cents. Okay, well, <laughs> but if you sell it on your own, you can get more. But obviously, this is a story well worth telling, and I had to, you know, um, it was it was a very interesting book. It's very poignant. It's very um, it has an it had an innocence to it. I think. Um, I don't know. Do you think it was because you were there before the big? Ba I or think, you think so. It was maybe your own personality. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think it was there was an innocence part of it at that time because I was. More of a kind of an innocent type of guy, you know, because I was um, very religious at the time, and uh, uh, so I, my point of view was a little bit different. Okay, now, I, and we didn't, like I say, we've been mainly talking about Vietnam, but there's besides Colony in the 40s, and you have some good stories in here about the Catholic schools and everything. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just changed. You know, that was one of the things that uh, I, I had uh, I had gone to Catholic schools in Albany. Uh, uh, for ten years, because I tw I failed twice, you know. Okay, <laughs> yes. you, you, you mentioned that in here, I didn't but uh, uh, I thought you know uh, that was significant. You know, that was a significant part of my education on on it, and um, uh, that was one. Things were different; they were strict, and uh, but you, there was a a sense of right and wrong, whether it was yeah. correct or not, there was at least you had parameters of, okay, this is right and this is wrong. And even though you did have a couple stories about some of the nuns that went out of their way to, to, to help you. Um, yeah, I, I again, I put in it there that I actually kept, a, she was a pen pal of mine right up until her death when she was in the 80s. And, and so I, you know, we in the 1980s. In touch. Yeah, she was, okay. yeah, she was in the 80s. She, you know, she, uh, she was, she lived until she was in the 80s. Uh, um, uh, I don't know if I should put this in or not, but my daughter did make a flyer up as far as uh, my book, and she because it is thirteen ninety five. But I'm, I'm probably gonna, you know, if I, all right. Well, people it, can get it. People can get it on Amazon. I'll, they I'll it on the Amazon. They're watching. Yeah. So I thank you. You have great, um, really no, nice, wonderful book here. Insights into Colony, but more, most, most importantly, your your stories about Vietnam, particularly. It's sort of a. I mean, I, what, I, what we said before. Some of the stereotypes. This is totally not it's, that. Is. It's, no, I think it, I tried to make it a positive. I, mm -hmm. I, I hope it comes off as being a, a, a feel-good book. It comes. It does. It does come off as a feel-good book. So thanks, Norm, for coming. We really appreciate well, it. The book I can't. I can't shoot straight. Really, by Norm. Norm Delap. So we'll see you next time on Meet the Author. <laughs>